Hi, I'm James Brown. In case you missed it, this is the week that was at jamesbrowntv.substack.com. Going home early. This is commentary from James Brown. Have you noticed that bars and restaurants aren't as busy as they once were? I have too, and we're not alone. That's one of the lingering changes since the COVID-19 pandemic, documented by Placer AI, that's a foot traffic analytics firm. Their data shows that people are less likely to go out to dinner after 7 p.m. The pattern, as laid out in Nation's Restaurant News, shows that foot traffic around restaurants at 7 p.m. has moved to about 5 p.m. nationwide. Yelp is seeing similar trends among restaurant reservations. In fact, in 2023, 10% of all diners were seated between 2 and 5 p.m. That's double what it was in 2019. The amount of diners seated between 4 p.m. and 6 p.m. went up from 17% in 2019 to about a quarter in 2023. And I must admit, I've done all this in recent months. I'm not sure why all this is happening, but I know of a few things that likely play a role here. We've seen a ton of these restaurants come back with shorter hours and higher prices. At the same time, it's been well documented that a good portion of upwardly mobile white collar workers, you know, the people more likely to absorb these price increases and eat out anyway, have left cities due to COVID-19 restrictions and concerns. They spread out into suburban areas and small cities and towns around the country. And many of them are among the percentage of our population who are still working remotely, at least part of the week. Which means they're not near most bars and restaurants in a lot of cases. And then there's the elephant in the room. Crime is still above pre-pandemic levels. And with that, I'm not surprised by this data. And honestly... I think it's another reason why nothing is going back to the way it was anytime soon. What do you think and why are we eating out earlier? Tell me in the comments at jamesbrowntv.substack.com or email me at jamesbrowntv at gmail.com. You could also leave me a message at 585-484-0339. On that note, I'm James Brown, and as always, be well. Pawns in the Culture War. This is commentary from James Brown. In California, media literacy is now a required subject in K-12 schools. New York State is following their lead soon. And I can't think of a worse idea. As a journalist and career communications professional, I'm all for media literacy. I think vetting the abundant amounts of information around us is more important than ever. But state-mandated media literacy is a different story. That idea is ripe for abuse. These concepts should be in the hands of parents or caring adults or yourself as you grow up and learn through trial and error. Not dictates from politicians with their own agendas, no matter what party they come from. It's bad enough that our public schools are struggling teaching reading, writing, and arithmetic. How about we get the basics right before we add more to those plates? And to my friends who are in a hurry to skew curricula to the left or the right, stop it. Let's agree to stop using kids as pawns in the culture war. Stop it. And always remember and never forget, we live in a republic. And every power you turn over to the government isn't easy to get back. That's how the country is designed. Those powers that you're so eager to give up will be wielded by whoever is in control. And the reality is that someday it won't be your party. And you won't like their choices. If history has taught us anything, it's that nothing lasts forever. Especially in politics. What do you think? And am I wrong here? And how should we teach media literacy? Tell me in the comments at jamesbrowntv.substack.com or email me at jamesbrowntv at gmail.com. You could also leave me a message at 585-484-0339. I love hearing them.
On that note, I'm James Brown. And as always, be well. A Vision of Greatness. This is commentary from James Brown. It's Wednesday and it's time for some wit and wisdom. This time from Dr. Cornell West. He's a professor, a philosopher, and of course, a presidential candidate. Because it's 2023 and why the hell not? His words come from an interview on PBS with his frequent collaborator, Tavis Smiley. West argues that we need to have a habitual vision of greatness. You see, you have to believe in fact that you will refuse to settle for mediocrity. You won't confuse financial security with your personal integrity. You won't confuse your success with your greatness or your prosperity with your magnanimity. Uh, If you uh, have uh, a vision of greatness, there's something that's luring you all the time for something grander than you. And of course, as a Christian, for me, he who is greatest among us will be your servant, your servant, the quality of your service to others. Do you find joy in your service to others? Do you actually believe in fact that living is connected to giving? With that vision comes responsibility. Well, those things require what? People willing to pay a price, bear a burden. If you think it's cost-free, if you think there's no price to be paid, then it's easy to slide back into conformity, complacency, and that goes hand-in-hand with our market-driven, narcissistic, hedonistic society, with more and more people concerned just about getting over as opposed to being a better, more decent, compassionate human being. These words stayed with me, shaping me for the better part of two decades. I come back to them when I need to remember that burdens aren't always bad things to bear. What do you think? And what burdens do you carry? Tell me in the comments at jamesbrowntv.substack.com or email me at jamesbrowntv at gmail.com. You could also leave me a message at 585-484-0339. On that note, I'm James Brown. And as always, be well. I'll be there for you. This is commentary from James Brown. I, I want to dedicate this song to, uh, to another song. And if it makes you think of a person, that's who it's dedicated to. Does this mean anything to you? That's the sound of a melancholy crowd at a Charlie Perth show. If you haven't noticed already, They're singing the theme song from Friends. This, of course, is because of the death of Matthew Perry a few weeks back. As regular listeners know, I have a fondness for sitcoms. If you know me really well, you know that that fondness is actually an obsession. The next time we talk, ask me about what theme song is running through my head. Friends never really connected with me as a show, but like many, I'm still captivated by its exuberant theme song. It has all the elements that I look for in a great theme. It's light enough to be consumed over and over and over again. Its lyrics are tone directly, or in this case, indirectly, address the show's conceit. The song is also unique enough to stand out in the pantheon of television, but yet representative of its time. And last, but certainly not least, the song fits with the show's opening or closing credit sequence, like a glove. When the rain starts What do you think, and what is your favorite TV theme song? Tell me in the comments at jamesbrowntv.substack.com or email me at jamesbrowntv at gmail.com. You can also leave me a message at 585-484-0339. On that note, I'm James Brown, and as always, be well. Christmas songs. This is commentary from James Brown. Those that know me well know I'm not much of a Christmas person. 
This time of year, I often joke that my heart is a lump of coal. I've been called a grump, a scrooge, a cringe, and in many ways that has not changed. But these feelings don't stop me from acknowledging beauty when I hear it from the mouths of middle schoolers singing, echoing through the atrium of my hometown city hall. my friends, is what joy sounds like. What do you think? Tell me in the comments at jaysbrowntv.substack.com or email me at jaysbrowntv at gmail.com. You could also leave me a message at 585-484-0339. On that note, I'm James Brown, and as always, be well.